let's get into um, your book. Um, you sure you don't want to talk Boston sports first? We, well, no, I, I'm get, that's how I'm getting into it. <laughs> how to be perfect, the correct answer to every moral question. You have one, right, Chris, for him right off the bat? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, go for it. Yeah, it. Go for it. Get into it. Go for it. I will never, ever, as long as I shall live, will forgive John Henry for trading Mookie Betts. That's it. That's all. I, that's my moral. Yeah, is that a moral I, question, or that's how, just, do I, how do I get past? No, it's a moral question. Does that fit? Yeah. Does that fit the mold yeah, of he, your? Here's what like I would he, say. Seventy. I didn't want to pay an extra seventy million because he wanted to be paid three hundred plus. You, you own Liverpool. It's like in your couch cushion. Right. True. Or don't pay Nathan. All right, let him answer. Stop. <laughs> stop. My God, this is not EEI for crying out loud. I got it. <laughs> uh, thank God it's not EEI. Um, <laughs> it's good. I, here's what I'll say about this. Uh, you're. Uh, uh, all the reports were he wanted to leave, that he wasn't going to sign, that he wanted to test free agency. Uh, and given that, was it a prudent move to trade him when they could get something back for him? Possibly. Is it good that, you know, you have Verdugo as a young guy, salary controlled, coming up through now now a, a crucial part of the team? Absolutely. All that being said, I'll never forgive him either. Thank you. It's, it was the wrong moral decision. It was a morally corrupt decision to trade Mookie Betts. If you have Mookie Betts, I don't care if he's going to leave. I don't care if it's better for the team. You keep him as long as you possibly can because yeah. he's the world's greatest living human being. And he's also exactly. yours, right? Like he's he's the one oh, that no. you, you saw from the minute he first stepped on a field. You Look, know? we don't know what he offered. We don't know what Henry offered him at all. We have no idea. He might have offered him right. trout plus a dollar. I don't know. <laughs> the point is that you you don't ever... That guy should have played 22 years in a Red Sox uniform, had his number retired... And had been paid. I don't care if the team sucks for 15 years. I just want to watch that guy play for my team. So you do everything you possibly can to keep him. That's what I think. And the moral, the the moral decision of this is just doing something the it's right just, thing for your fan it's base. It's really right? just I mean, I'm angry. That's right. <laughs> it's not much exactly. beyond that. Okay. And I will never not be angry about it. Yeah. That's it's certainly now that he's out there, you get a front row seat here in Los Angeles. Well, that, greatness. that is great, by the way. As a resident of Los Angeles, I, my son and I have gone to see yes. the Dodgers play 12 times since he came out here, and it is wonderful to see him. Play. So now this perfect thing as well, I wanted to ask you, because again, uh, and then we'll get into questions specifically that are asked in this book. Here's a moral question for you, Michael Sure, because I know your son is a diehard baseball mm -hmm. kid. Yeah. Cooper and I do a fantasy league together. Zan right. also contributes. Right. And they're asking me, when are we going to do the fantasy baseball draft this year? And I had it. I made that look that you're giving me right now. Like, <laughs> how do I explain a lockout? Yeah. To my child. How do I explain corporate children? greed to a <laughs> nine year old? Yeah. You know what I'm saying like, how do I, well, you know what? They're trying to figure out a luxury tax. Like how do like, what do you like? I, I basically said, I don't know if there's going to be one this year. And yeah, and the question comes back, why? And I'm like, well, they're arguing over how to be paid, you know? Yeah, like, that's it. I know. It's hard. And, you know, what's really sad is, like, I am watching. My son lives, breathes, eats baseball and basketball and football, too. But right. baseball was his first love. And I'm watching it affect him in real time. Like, he's just like, what the hell? Like, why Why is this? What are they doing? Why can't we have baseball on, on April 1st? Right. And I can run through the situation about the history of the union and Kurt Flood and Marvin Miller and this and that. <laughs> yeah. and he doesn't care. He wants baseball. You know what I mean? Like I, and yeah. the labor practices uh, that are under scrutiny and the own ownership practices are, it really makes you realize when you explain it to a kid, yes. how cruel this is of specifically the league and ownership to not be more uh, desirous of a full season because all kids want all baseball fans want Watch damn baseball games right. on April, starting April 1st. You count on this sport to bring you from April to October every year, and they're just going to deny us that, and it's driving me nuts. So have you had this conversation with Will? I yeah. have, and he's he just, he he understands, that he's old enough to have the... 13. Yeah, right. he's old enough to have the basic understanding of, like, owners are greedy, players were treated unfairly for a long time. It's that quote, I can't remember who it is now, said uh, owners screwed us for the first 60 years and now we're going to screw them for the next 60. Like that was mm. when the free agency thing happened. But regardless, you can explain it all you want. The end result is there's no baseball and it's horrifying. Well, I got my kids a Donald Fear pop-up book oh. and, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's better than a Jeffrey Kessler scratch and sniff <laughs> for kids. <laughs>
I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I'm like so done with this thing right now. The labor, like, the, yeah. the lockout. Like it, because you know what's coming. You yeah. know it's, you know that it's going to go to the... Well, now, the crazy thing now is not to go too far down this rabbit hole. They're just arguing about money. My friend Joe Posnanski wrote about this the other day. Yeah. It's now like most of the other stuff, the arbitration years and the, this and manipulation, that... That stuff's mostly either been settled or gone away. It's just money now. And that's what makes it worse to me is like, if you're just arguing about money, then you, a collection of 30 billionaires, yeah. ought to find the money to make this go away. That's like, the idea. Yeah. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.